All right, welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today we're here at Rapid TCT to check out the latest and greatest developments in 3D printing technology. So we're walking by this uh, bamboo booth. Let's go take a look. So this is the H2D. As you can see, it's printing a panda here. Pandas love bamboo, so it makes sense. We've got a, a laser cutter machine here. It absorbs the smoke. And then we have their old stuff. I mean, that's going pretty fast. What do you think of that print quality? I would like to do a review on one of these machines, but I don't think they're gonna let me. So let's take a look at it. It's in there, they're doing a little bit of repairs on that. Looks uh, kind of complicated to, to work on. Oh, and this one's doing a laser. 40 watt head is on there. Look at that, laser time. All right, very cool. All right, let's move on to the next booth in our uh, wonderful exploration of 3D printing technology. We got Elegoo over here. Here is the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Recently voted the best value in 3D printing by my, my viewers. Only, what is it, $300? $300 for uh, essentially a Bamboo Lab X1C clone. You know, it's just a, a nice, solid, low-cost machine. 3D printing doesn't have to be all that expensive, so uh, gotta appreciate what Elegoo is doing, bringing 3D printing to the masses. And uh, we're also bringing 3D printing to the massive with this Orange Storm Giga. I don't know how practical that machine is, but uh, you know, if you want to fire up a five week long print, I suppose that's one of the better ways to do it. Okay, and then uh, we have the Creality both over here. They actually have quite a lot of new stuff on display. First off, I need to disclose something to you. I am a, a major Creality fanboy, and they did pay for my travel to come out here to show you all these products. They actually didn't require me to do any videos about their products, but I'm gonna do them a solid and, uh, and cover all this new stuff because I actually think it's pretty interesting. This is their new resin printing technology. Uh, apparently the vat moves up and down instead of the, uh, the platform moving up and down. It's like kind of backwards compared to other printers. And then the big news is we've got two new printers here in the K2 series. So we've got the Creality K2, and then over here we've got the Creality K2 Pro. Now they haven't released all the information about these machines, but we can basically figure out what it is just by looking at it. So this is a 260 by 260 build volume. It uh, appears that it has some kind of filtration in the back, but it doesn't look like it has a chamber heater. So this is gonna be kind of your new entry level. Not sure what the pricing is. I think we're gonna figure that out tonight. All right, and then there's the K2 Pro. I think this is just slightly scaled up from the K2. It's gonna slot in right between the K2 and the K2 Plus, which came out, you know, four to six months ago. This is your K2 Plus. It looks like it's in the back there, purging for a new color. Um, but this is 350 by 350 heated chamber. It's got all the bells and whistles. This is 300 by 300, and it's got a similar amount of bells and whistles. And then this is your more stripped down model. Now the main difference here is it looks like we've got some new cast aluminum frames in the top and bottom. It's a little more rounded off. Maybe that'll survive shipping a little bit better. Maybe uh, you can fall and hit your head a little bit harder without getting uh, brain damage. And then we've got the Spacefy X4. It's, uh, it heats things up, dries out your filaments. It has amazing technology where you can heat and dry your filament at the same time. It's, it's truly amazing. All right, next up we've got the Creality Highs on display. These are printing out some cool stuff. I would peel one of these off, but I don't want to ruin the print job that they're working on. And we've got some phone holders here. Now these Creality Highs have very good print quality. I mean, you can see this is just excellent. It's got this new build surface that works really good. You can see no problems with bed adhesion here. And in trade shows, you tend to have issues with that because people are touching things and messing things up but you can see we got great print quality there. Okay, and then uh, we've got CFS units. This is basically their AMS clone. You know, Bamboo Lab came out with the AMS. Creality's got the CFS that offers similar capabilities. All right, let's uh, move on a little bit further. Now Creality also has some other stuff here. Of course, we've got the K2 Plus, which uh, we took a look at extensively on my channel, so I can link to some videos if you wanna learn more about this machine. I think it's a really nice flagship printer. It's got a lot of space and uh, you know high temperature, all the good stuff. Pure Create 
is uh, Heo Kriant. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. This is Creality's more industrial line of printers. You see there's like a, you know, like a massive build volume. And it looks like it's got a, uh, uh, pellet, you know, extrusion system. I don't know exactly how that works. They say it's supposed to get like around a kilogram or 0.8 kilograms per hour. So it can print quite fast. It's got a large diameter nozzle to feed all of that, uh, you know, those pellets through there. All right, this printer is one that I would really like to get in, in my lab because this looks like some pretty incredible print quality. I don't know if I can open this up. I've, uh, let's let's go ahead and open it up and see. Ah, I think the door is locked. Well, anyways, you can see it's printing right now, and it's the quality is quite good. Here's some finished products. Uh, I think it's printing another one of these. Like, look at that. Really consistent layer lines. Really thick. This is strong stuff. And it's special material that you're not going to typically get with a 3D printer of this type. Because they're using pellets, they can use more specialty materials, including like soft rubber. And, uh, oh yeah, take a look at these nozzles. It goes all the way up to 0.4 millimeters. No, sorry, 4.0 millimeters. So, you know, much larger diameter printing. And uh, you can even go to super soft and flexible filaments like this one over here. This is like super squishy, very similar to like a couch cushion or something. All right, and then uh, they've also got a laser cutter engraver running right now. I can smell the smoke slightly, so this air scrubber isn't doing a perfect job, but you know, it's, it's doing a passable job at making this thing not smoke up the whole place and set up the smoke alarms. It's doing all right. All right, so let's, uh, let's keep on moving. And uh, there's a bunch of sample projects here. Now you can see this is a standalone machine, and all it does is it does the laser cutting. It doesn't also do 3D printing which uh, some of you might find that disappointing, but hey, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than a all-in-one magic device. Okay, now let's take a look at this. We've got some new laser scanners over here. Sorry, I'm just getting in there. Hey, hey, all right, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a celebrity around here. What can I say? Okay, okay, all right. All right. Well, don't, don't feed my ego anymore. I gotta, I gotta stay focused here. So you can see they're using it for an automotive application here. You can get nice scans. Creality shilling session over. We're gonna go take a look at some other stuff that I found interesting in this, uh, this little convention here. Wow, this is pretty cool. I used to work as a test engineer. This claims to be some kind of automated testing system. So I guess you can just feed it a bunch of dog bones and it will go ahead and pull them apart and gather all the tensile test data. All right, there's all sorts of metal additive manufacturing, which isn't super relevant to you know your basic hobby consumer, but you can see this stuff looks really cool. It's like you could make high-end artwork or replicas or statues or whatever uh, or you know structural parts for real applications whether that's an automotive aerospace you name it if you can think of a shape you can probably 3d print it out of metal and there's tons of companies that are dedicated to doing that and then uh, we got the fl sun pros over there we got this gigantic machine over here this is what's called a big rep so very large printer it uh, is way bigger than an Orange Storm Giga, so it's got at least a cubic meter in there by the looks of it. Here's an expeditionary printer unit over here. So it looks like it's like uh, they can print things inside of a cargo container. And uh, I guess this would be useful for the military or something. You can just deploy this on skids put it in uh, anywhere you want and start making metal parts. We've got giant robot arms that are 3D printing things with a gigantic pellet fed extruder. That thing looks pretty cool. I would love to have one of those uh, just for various arts and crafts projects. This is the Thermwood LSAM, large scale additive manufacturing. I actually did a video with these guys maybe two years ago. It's really cool. It looks like their main application is making molds for either carbon fiber or fiberglass layup. So they can just print out a rough shape and then go back through and polish and machine it so that you can do you know, complex mold shapes. Great if you're making aerodynamic surfaces or anything like that. So you can see even these large molds, like you gotta think about how you would actually make that if you didn't have a machine like this. All right, over here we have the LDO Motors booth. 
If you like Vorons, then you've probably heard of this company. We got the box turtle up here. We've got the little poops over here. These are the cutest little poops. They're like, uh, they're like chocolate chips. Very nice. Box turtle is doing its thing. If you want to build your own printers, LDO kits are a great way to do it. I gotta say, they, they do a good job of getting you all the hardware so that the only thing that you really have to figure out is how these designs go together. Um, oh yeah, we got another box turtle doing its thing. So yeah, it's basically like an open source AMS type unit. And we've got a kind of an interesting thing going on here. It looks like a uh, little plate management system so it can pick things up and, you know, basically run a print farm for you to some degree, add a little automation yeah. into your workflow. Over here we've got the Voron Zero, very tiny, cute thing, LDO V0. They also have a lot of specialty motors here. So uh, Jason was showing me this one, which is apparently used for pick-and-place machines. You put this on an end effector so you can move a part around, pick it up with a vacuum, move it, and then this motor can actually rotate it, and it has a hollow shaft so the vacuum can go through the middle and uh, you can rotate components and place them onto a PCB that way. So just all sorts of cool, interesting stuff here. I think Bond Tech had something that's causing quite the stir on the 3D printing scene because it's basically a tool changer without having a bunch of additional electronics. But first I wanna show you this stuff. This is some crazy stuff. This is like rubbery, soft, creepy materials and uh, it's all jiggly and it's like, I don't know, it feels wrong. It's like very soft. It's softer than anything you would traditionally 3D print. Like this is like super, super flexible and fleshy. What would you do with a printer like this? I mean, the possibilities are endless. Looks like they made a purse here. I don't know what the enabling technology is. I'm just showing you the cool stuff and whoa. Okay, this is, this is kind of interesting. <laughs> It looks like uh, they've got a print head. Oh, they're printing right now. It's doing non-planar printing, and it's uh, just depositing that in a zero-gravity environment. Basically, the buoyancy of that material is going to allow it to just float in place. It's got neutral density compared to its surroundings. So that's a really cool machine. I'd love to have one of those for testing and review. I'll put in a, uh, a request, and I think they'll be able to send one over for me. And then here's the little uh, printer that's setting social media on fire. This is the Bond Tech Index, INDX, and it's a tool changer where it just changes out the hot end and the, uh, the nozzle. You can kind of see what's going on here, but it's still very mysterious how it works. You know, it prints things out, and then it can just change uh, the tool. And you can see how compact this is. You can fit four different tools on such a small machine. On a traditional setup where you have an entirely different print head for each color, you run out of real estate there real quick. But on a machine like this, since this is so small and compact, you can fit four colors on here. If you had a bigger printer, you could probably fit like 20 colors on there. And we've got a little CPAP cooler. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you would love to build a little machine like that. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. I, I blocked the shot. Did I block the shot? Oh no. Bontech is sharing a booth with Slice Engineering, so we're just looking at a couple things here. One thing that I saw when I visited uh, Slice Engineering's facility down in Florida was this print. It's very interesting. It was printed with a 0.1 millimeter diameter nozzle, which is extremely fine, and you can just see the level of detail that you can get here. It's incredible. This looks like an SLA print, like a resin-based printing technology, because I can't see the layer lines on this thing. It looks like a computer graphic. Probably takes forever to print. It's probably a little finicky because, uh, you know, that small nozzle diameter means that it'll clog more easily. But if you can manage the complexity, then you can get some excellent prints. All right, here's the food hall area. If you want to get something to eat, then you can get some Detroit-style pizza. I think we're in Detroit, Michigan, so this would be a good place to try it out. Here's a Mitotoyo CMM. You can see it's doing some, uh, some profile measurements or something. It's probably very accurate. All right, Pantheon Design, I think they're launching a new product, which is a larger printer. You can see how big this thing is. I think this is bigger than their other ones. Is that bigger? 400 by 400 by 300. Okay, 400. Which, which feels a lot bigger. It's probably the difference between being able to pick it up yourself and not being able to pick it up yourself. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. All right. 
So uh, yeah, I mean, this stuff looks really nice. I saw some videos featuring this printer and it looks like they've got the extrusion dialed in perfectly so they can do solid parts and not run into any issues. Or, I mean, so I always run into problems when I print 100% infill. It looks like these things are doing a great job of it. Either way. Very cool. Okay, this is the older machine that's smaller. And this is the upgraded larger size. It's got insane specs and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And here's their little 3D printed uh, motorcycle project. And now over here, we've got the Flash Forge booth. They've got some parts on display. Here's a, uh, a dual nozzle setup. Very cool. Uh, Guider 4 Pro. Here's a Guider 4 that has a multicolor color changing setup where you can feed four different filaments into it. And then I actually have one of these in my office. Uh, they sent one over for me to try out. I'm gonna be doing a separate video where I go over all the pros and cons. One of the cons is that you, to get the, oh wait, they updated these. They actually changed the spool holder design. That was something I complained about in my video, but it looks like they updated it and now it's more able to accommodate differing spool sizes. So cool, we're learning about little upgrades here and there. That's why we have to fly to Detroit and look at all the printers. Okay, over here, this appears to be a thing made by Luke's lab. We've got an exploded tube. That's, uh, what else we got? But you can save it. That's the whole okay. So you, you get that, pull it off the machine, and then peel all the plastic out. Did we have a bamboo thing going on over here? We do have a bamboo thing going on. Uh, that's, that's disappointing to hear, but let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right, what do we... Essentially, uh, what we're just trying to show off here, I think this is the first layer. So we have a supported uh, lower melt zone, uh, which is much longer than normal. This is uh, 327 grams right. of plastic. So it's 100% it's infill, all that kind of stuff. This was printed in two hours and 57 minutes. The other cool fun parts are that it is supported by titanium, has a replaceable titanium heat break as well. So if you need to, you can take it out, torch it, throw it back in all you want. We're really excited about it, drops right in. All right, so last up, I wanna show you some uh, non-planar slicing stuff we've got going on over here. So here is a, uh, a little thing that's like, uh, basically the idea is to print with one continuous like uh, extrusion where you never stop extruding. So it goes from layer to layer, almost like it's doing vase mode, but it goes in and fills everything in. So I could see this being useful in like a, uh, one of those uh, pellet extruders where it's hard to start and stop. You can just keep that thing going until you print an entire 3D shape. There's some interesting algorithms going on. And then next up we have something here uh, this is a uh, variable density infill using, uh, what is that? This looks like gyroid infill. So I guess they can assign material properties in different directions, change the density to make it stronger, heavier, lighter, you know, that kind of stuff. And also it looks like they can get some directional uh, material properties here. This is a, a little beam bending problem. And it looks like they've strengthened it in certain ways but this is like a pretty classic design problem in structural engineering. Where you're trying to make a bridge, you've got two supports, and then you're pushing down on the top here. And uh, this is supposed to support those loads that are designed to be strong in certain directions. I actually did my master's in this lab, so you know, I'm always talking about 3D printing, and this is the kind of stuff that I used to work on in grad school. So now you know a little history about uh, how I got into 3D printing. Oh yeah, there was one thing over here that was very trippy. I can't find the thing I'm looking for, but basically it was like vibrating really fast to shake up powders and like mix powders together, which I guess is important in a bunch of 3D printer applications when you're dealing with powders and pastes. You wanna make sure they're well mixed. But uh, this machine was like shaking things around and just due to the frame rate of the strobing lights and of the camera, it was doing some really weird stuff. So I'll just show you. Um, hopefully it doesn't freak you out too much. And yes, it almost looks that weird in real life, in case you were wondering. All right, so that's all there is at Rapid TCT. Just kidding, I only covered about 10% of what's in there, if that. So uh, definitely come on by if you wanna see some cool 3D printer stuff. Also, lots of free drinks and food. They're not cheaping out on the liquor there, so. Uh, if you want to have some good drinks and some good food and uh, just network with some people a little bit, it's a good time.
All right, so that sums up this episode. Let me know if you had any questions about any of the booths or technology we were taking a look at today, and I'll see you in the next episode.